On-the-scene coverage of ACC 13 is supported by Janssen Pharmaceuticals, Incorporated. Welcome to ACC 2013. We are here in San Francisco, and it's an exciting opening day. I've got a great panel again. It's sort of like an, an old rock band, and then we're back again. <laughs> but let me introduce, the, introduce my panel to you. Start with Chris Cannon, who many of you know. Chris is the professor of medicine at the Harvard Medical School and editor-in-chief of CardioSource Science and Quality. Chris, good to have you back again. Thanks. Athena Pappas. Athena is also well known to many of you. Athena is an associate professor at Brown University and the director of the Echo Lab at the Rhode Island Hospital. And Tony DeMaria. Tony, good to see you again. Hello. Tony is a professor of medicine at UC San Diego and is also editor-in-chief of JAK. So thanks very much for all of you joining. As I said, it's like a, a rock band back in San Francisco here. So, so let me ask you, it's opening day. Athena, we had the Simon Dack lecture this morning. Tell us a little bit about what you gathered from that. Great. Yeah, Dr. Valentina Fuster gave a great lecture, sort of taking us through some of the history back in the 70s when we were figuring out, or he was figuring out, really, about thrombosis in the arteries. And I think we've forgotten that and how aspirin made a big difference, particularly in saphenous vein grafts, up to the vulnerable plaque, which everyone's well aware of. And then I think moving into the future, of looking at some other subclinical markers of disease so that we can really start to promote health. So I think it was really very expansive and exciting looking to the future. So, Chris? Well, I was going to say, this is actually how I got into cardiology. So right when he was writing about plaques rupturing and thrombosis mm -hmm. and unstable angina and, and visualizing that, it was when I was in residency and, and uh, so an exciting thing. And it's obviously evolved a lot in a the lot. last 25 years. Yeah, of course, I was in grammar school. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I was going to say, yeah, so, uh, the kindergarten teacher yeah. was telling you. But, but it is interesting, the vulnerable plaque, it just moved go away, uh, you know, ex exactly how important any given plaque is mm -hmm. and, and what to do about it uh, keeps coming back and forth and, and perhaps with some of the new imaging modalities, right. we may have a way to detect them. Super. Well, I, I think some of the ideas too are moving even further to look at the entire body. So both the brain, the carotids, the peripheral vascular, that it's really atherosclerosis anywhere puts you at risk for both brain and cardiac so, so an interesting session. I hear Larry King was uh, breaking up the crowd there. <laughs> Not as good as Dr. DeMaria, but he, but he was good. So Tony, it's a, it's a, a lot of things going to be happening in the meeting. What are some of the things you're going to be looking forward to? Well, well, you know, what's interesting to me about this meeting is that in many ways it's an update on things that we've talked about in the past. For instance, the DIG trial, <laughs> I mean, 200 years of digitalis, and we're revisiting uh, data from the DIG trial that was conducted 20 years ago. Uh, they're giving us updates on partner trial. There's a study on chelation. Yeah, and, yeah. and vitamins in, in chelation. Some new data on eplerinone, some new data on renolazine, but again, not new Going compounds, back. compounds that have been around for a while, and even, even in surgery, the debate about on pump, on off pump. pump. Yeah. So uh, a, a lot of updating on topics that have been around for a while. Chris, what do you think? I mean, well, some interesting... to that point, I think one of the biggest things this opening day is the Heart Protection 2 Thrive that's revisiting right. niacin, which is like the one of the very first studies from the Coronary Drug Project. Interestingly, we're gonna, that we're was come back and talk exactly, about that you know, minutes, a, a big, uh, in theory, something that you know, has been part of the armamentarium. When you look back at the trial, it was like a thousand patients. Right. And now it takes 25,000 to do definitive trials. So interesting of Same. revisiting old drugs, but with big definitive current right. state-of-the-art trials. Tony, you think, you think we're going to learn some new things about uh, old drugs, old uh, theories? I mean, is, is this going to, do you have a feeling that this may change practice is really what I'm getting at? I, I think, I think, in some respects, uh, it may, but in, in most respects, it's probably not going to change things too much. Uh, uh, of course, we can't talk about the results of the <laughs> trial, so it's hard to tell you whether it's going to change practice or not. But uh, I, I think it, it will definitely change practice in terms of either pushing a therapy right, forward right, or backward. Right, right, okay. 
Chris? Well, it's a, it's a fun meeting also to get people's reaction. So in that type situation, if it challenges something we've known, to then say and ask colleagues, well, what do what you, you think do? of this? Yeah. And yeah. what about <laughs> this other type patient? And would this apply? And, you know, so being at, here to be able to ask those questions and interact, I think, is a lot of fun. Well, I think that's part of the beauty of the meeting. And Tony, you were yeah. saying that it's, you know, it, you really do get an update. I mean, that's really what the meeting is about, not only see colleagues, but to get an update on things that will help change practice. I think a lot of quality outcomes as well. So not yeah. only drug discoveries, but are we, of what we know, are we doing what we should be doing? And so starting to measure those things and change behavior. So I think that's sort of a whole nother arena that is really out there at this meeting, which yeah. is exciting. Yeah, now, th now there, there are some new things. There's a piece selectin uh, inhibitor that's, that's going to be evaluated, okay. and that's, that's pretty interesting. And there's some new data on diastolic dysfunction that's driven us all crazy. Uh, uh, you know, do PDE inhibitors work, for instance? So, so I think that there's going to be some new important data yeah. as yeah. well about topics well, I mean, we and you weren't had. you weren't implying that that learning about old things is not new data, but, but you're right, not. there are some new things that are coming out. So Chris gave us a tease about a trial that we're going to talk about, but we're going to take a short break, and then I think we're going to come back, and uh, we'll be back with you in just a minute to talk about one of the new late-breaking clinical trials. <laughs>